Welcome to Networking with Fish, having a little bit of fun in the lab with Fish. What we're going to go ahead and do today is actually play with APIC EM 1.3. So this is October 2016. So this, of course, updates my March 2016 APIC EM 1.1 series. What we're going to do in this first series is actually just go ahead. I just put the ISO in into a uh, ASXI environment and we're going to go ahead and go in there and do the setup but first what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on this environment we have site one and site two which is data center one and data center two and of course also the branches this is all uh, real equipment r11 r12 r21 and r22 are actually asr 1002 x's r15 i think is a 3850 r25 might be a 4948 uh, they're just my core routers not specific to any pfr functionality just my core data center routers for data center one and two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on this YouTube with just actually bringing up APIC-EM 1.3. So we're going to focus specifically in on just site one, which is where I have all my compute, and we're going to focus specifically on the APIC-EM, which is going to be at 10.1.202.41. We have not breathed life into it yet. I only had the ISO on a little while ago, so we're going to go ahead and do that together. So what you'll see is R15 has a 10 gigabit interface trunk link up to something, some box, where VLAN 201 and 202 are. That's actually ESXi environment. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and focus in on R15 first. From R15, we're going to go ahead and do a show interface trunk. We're going to see that actually I only have one of those 10 gig interfaces up. Uh, I haven't connected up the other fabric interconnect as what I have not connected the other fabric interconnect up and when I say I have not connected the other fabric internet <laughs> the fabric inter you can tell that I'm tripping all over the words I am not the one obviously who is setting up the fabric interconnect it is my co-worker uh, and dear friend Brett Huffman uh, he is the one that has set up all of the Fabric Interconnect and all of the stuff on my B-Series uh, with my M4 blades and my M2 blades, set everything up there, connected up to my storage. I'm basically just a user of the environment, so he'll be connecting up the other Fabric Interconnect likely tomorrow or next week. So we'll have one. We'll go to R15. We'll notice that we have a connection to 10112 that is a trunk connection and we'll see that off of that I have two SVIs on it switch virtual interfaces interface VLAN 201 and interface VLAN 202 that exist on R15 this will actually connect up R10 we'll actually see later it's not relevant to this specific YouTube but in subsequent YouTubes because R10 will actually be our domain master controller R10 is actually a CSR 1000 V so it is a IOS, iOS XE VM running 3.16.3 and we'll be looking at that later but that will be the domain master controller so our software defined wide area networking controller the environment that actually builds the policy but what we're going to do is we're going to use the iWin app version 1.3 to actually provision um, all of the iWin the DMVPN the PFR QoS, some other stuff, and then actually rock and roll from there. So we're going to go ahead and go to R15. Then we're going to notice that yes, indeed, that 10.1.1.2 does indeed connect to an FI. And then once we establish that, we'll go ahead and go into the ISXi host environment. I will show you that we have two different environments. We have an IWAN PBST1, which is a pre-built static testbed. And imagine just kind of sort of like a little pre playground for me to help people understand as customers come through. Uh, Pre-built static test bed number one is actually to go ahead and go deep diving in if people want to go geek on geek, nerd on nerd. IWAN PBST number two is actually the environment where I start basic configs. I have no DMVPN, I have no PFR on, I basically have no IWAN relevant configs on. And through some kind of provisioning tool, what we're going to do today is the IWIN app. We will go ahead and provision the already existing environment and we'll do a plug and play on a branch. 
but for today what we're going to do is just get the APIC EM up and set up. So we'll go to the APIC EM, which is right here, which will have an IP address of 10.1.202.41. Its default gateway, of course, will be right here, which is 10.1.202.1 and we will set it up. Remember, right now, I only just went ahead and had it come up and running. It's in the setup. I still have to accept the agreements, and you'll see that what I'm saying. We'll go ahead and set that all up. Then once we actually get it all set up and it's built itself, then we'll go ahead and from uh, CLI in the APIC EM grapevine uh, section, we'll ping the gateway, which will be 10.1.202.1, which is R15's VLAN 202 IP address. And then we will RDP into this PC, this PC right here, uh, that is a VM, is actually dual nic so I can have one NIC be the IP address that I will RDP into, and then from there I will then web into the APIC EM and we will be done with our YouTube. So let's go ahead and go to R10, I mean R15, so here is R15, so as I mentioned we're going to start at R15 first, so let's move this over here, expand this a little. So we're going to go ahead and start at R15 first. R15 is a, I'm going to do an include, 3850. So it is actually a 3850, and I'm going to go ahead and do a show interface trunk. And what we'll see is I do actually have right here 10112. If we do a show CDP neighbor, uh, 10112, we'll actually see that that is a fabric interconnect. And I did not connect that. Actually, uh, one of the CPOC RTP team leads. Uh, that I've been working with for like 15 years now. Brett Huffman is the one that actually built this whole environment for me. Built the PBST uh, section one with my M4s and my M2 blades in it and the B-series chassis that I have and also the other environment for PBST number two. So he built that environment. I'm just basically a user still trying to understand this whole thing uh, that he has built. So uh, can't really connect the fabric in or connect on my own. I'll need him. So we'll go ahead and also do a show IP interface brief and include VLAN. And we'll see again that R15 right here has two SVIs, two uh, switch virtual interfaces, interface VLAN 201 and interface VLAN 202. Of course, you notice here 10.1.202.1. I will actually be the IP address that the APIC-EM will be using as the default gateway. So let's go ahead and go over now to do the APIC EM and we will actually do the setup. That's where we'll be spending most of our time. So here is actually my environment. This is IWAN PBST number two. This is the IWAN app. I called it IWAN um, app because that's how I'm using it. It's actually APIC EM 1.3. So if we actually come over, but I use it from an IWAN app perspective. Up, oh, it doesn't like that. I. So this is open console. Now, if we actually look here, this is going to be the select view license agreement. And I'm just going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. It'd be wild and crazy. Validating disk throughput. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to step through all of this together. There will be a period of time once I say go that it will actually go ahead and take some time. At that moment in time, what we'll do is we'll also go ahead and count that down. So the disks for this host do not satisfy the requirements. The current disk is 95, 200. I'm actually going to go ahead and ignore this disk warning. I'm not trying to do something any major here. So we're going to ignore the disk warning. Welcome to the APIC EM configuration wizard. The wizard will walk you through the steps. I'm going to be creating a new APIC EM cluster. Now, obviously, you can go ahead and pause at any time here or replay what I'm saying. I'm not going to necessarily talk too slow on some of these, relatively self explanatory. So, the wizard has discovered one physical NIC. So, we're going to go ahead and say that that's going to be 10.1.202.41, as I had already mentioned in the diagram. So, if we come back over here, we see that it is 10.1.202.41. And then we're going to go ahead and virtual IP. You see that it actually says optional here. 
don't care about a virtual IP, netmask 255.255.255.0. Already told you that the default gateway that I'm going to use is R15s. Uh, so that's the default gateway. DNS is optional, not using a DNS server. Static routes, optional, not using that. So let's go ahead and go to next. So we're going to go ahead and validate and configure the host networking. We should sing to the tune of Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Okay, HTTPS proxy. Now I will tell you that this does not say this. So is a this is a pet peeve of mine. It says the controller appears to be behind a network proxy. I have a siloed environment. Okay, so clearly it must have noticed that it couldn't get to the cloud. I don't care about it getting to the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and skip all this because of the fact that I've done this before and I know what I'm doing. Now you'll see that in the middle here it says cancel. So again, pet peeve of mine. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. It's going to give me an error message. And then instead of actually having cancel in the middle, it's going to have skip proxy. I personally would have liked to have known that that was optional if I'm doing uh, something that is not up in the cloud and I'm actually in the same exact environment. Are you sure you would like to skip the proxy? Yes, I would like to skip the proxy. So we're going to go ahead and put a bogus. So we'll do networking with fish at, I don't know, acme.com. <laughs> My password will be networking uh, with fish. And just to let you know, obviously, I don't have that password. Company name will be networking with fish. So we'll just go ahead. All that is completely bogus. And remember, of course, uh, while it says that it's mandatory for my specific lab environments, this does not matter. The Linux password, uh, there will be a grapevine. So what will actually happen is the APKM GUI, what you'll see that later, will actually be on top of a, a, a grapevine uh, Linux base. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do uh, C1SCO123, that's capital. And then capital C1SCO123, that's actually also in the diagram. And this is going to be optional, so we don't care. And then optional, I don't care. And so next. And this is actually going to be the APIC-EM uh, web interface. So admin. And then we're still going to go ahead and do capital C1SCO 123. Capital C1SCO 123. And again, this is optional, so I don't care. Optional, I don't care. And we're moving on. NTP server, see that asterisk there? So enter the IP that says it is a mandatory field. So if we look over in the blue on the left-hand side, enter the IP address of the NTP server that the controller will use. Uh, it is recommended to specify three or more. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and use one. I'm gonna go ahead and use R15. And this is a mandatory field, so 10.1.202.1. And I'm going to go ahead and say next, that's 10.1.202.1. It's going to go ahead and validate the NTP server and make sure that R15 is acting like an NTP server. So perfectly fine and good. So now we're going to go ahead and enable IPsec encryption. So specifying a tunneling protocol for inner host communications, the default tunneling protocol used um, will be IPsec. Alternatively, GRE encapsulation can be used. So this is actually inter-host communication, not to be confused with um, the DMVPN, because if you look over on the right-hand side, you might be like, oh, okay, well, it's going to be IPsec. Well, of course, I'm going to go ahead and do 
my DMVPN with IPsec, but why do I have to explain it here? Admittedly, though, if you read the documentation, it's saying that it is inter-host communication, so this is specifying a tunneling protocol for inter-host communications. The default tunneling protocol used for inter-host communications in a multi-host cluster is IPsec. So we'll go ahead and we'll say, you know, sure, why not? But I don't have a multi-host uh, cluster. So harvest all the virtual disks. This is a brand new device. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say no and delete all users no because there shouldn't be anything there. So the wizard is now ready to apply the configurations on the controller. So we're gonna go ahead and use the proceed button to save your configuration changes. And we're also gonna go ahead and notice that it is 8.55 p.m. and I'm going to hit proceed. You can tell it's 8.55 p.m. and you can tell that I'm at Cisco because the cleaning people are out in the hallway right now. So this is going to go ahead and do configuring NTP and this is actually going to go ahead and take a while. So we'll go ahead and cut right here and come back and we'll estimate exactly how much time it took. So it's 9.31, let's go ahead and go back in, open console and see what's going on here. So we're at 32 of 37 services. It does tell us as we can see here that if we want to monitor the process of this operation, we can actually open up a web browser and actually go to this interface. Now what is this interface? This is actually the grapevine underlayers. So if I actually come here and say, let's go ahead and go in, now, of course, admittedly, I've already signed in. So we actually have this section, which is the controller development section. You'll notice that nothing over here is specifically highlighted, but I am within the APIC EM as well. So let's go ahead and go to home. Now, for those of you who last saw the APIC EM in 1.1, or 1.10, which was in March of 2016 in my last YouTube on the APIC EM, you'll notice that we actually now have a bigger kind of sort of home dashboards. We have dashboard, we have system health, we also have system information, and this is where it's going to show you we are at 1304383. So what are we gonna go ahead and do next? Well, in the next YouTube, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click IWAN right here. So we are now in the IWAN app portion. So as you can see, we have no newly discovered devices, we have no hubs, we have no branches, we have no scheduled jobs, and I can't click set up the branches, and I can't click administer the application policy, and I can't click monitor and troubleshoot. All I can do first is actually configure my hub sites. For us, that is going to be site one and site two, and that's what we're going to head and come back with. We're going to come into the iWAN app in the next YouTube, and we're going to provision site one and site two. We're going to assume that R11 and R12 and R21 and R22 over in site two are already up. They're already connected to the MPLS or the internet. We also are going to go ahead and assume that R10, which is the CSR 1000B, which will be our domain master controller, and R20 over in site two are actually brand new and they're not doing anything yet and we'll yet and we'll only have that IP address. But that's for the next YouTube. So hope you had a lot of fun playing the lab and networking with fish. And I'm out.